Coming up, one of the pioneering forces of New Wave tells the story of a classic composition that really epitomized the movement in the early 80s, helping put the genre on the map. The song sounded so cutting edge, so cosmopolitan and European, even though this band was from Orange County. Through the use of new technology and the singer changing the vocal from deadpan to sweetly melodic, the song rocketed to all-time success. Now, we've tried to release this twice before. YouTube has shut it down. We're hoping the third time's a charm. Coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if music is part of the joy of your life, you're going to want to subscribe below to this channel so you never miss an episode of our daily features. Uh, check the box as well. It's the red button. You probably know that by now. And make sure to check us out on Patreon to become an insider with us. So it's time for another episode of our series, Revelations. This is, of course, where featured artists reveal rare stories about their greatest songs or albums, fascinating insight uh, about their careers. And on this installment of Revelations, we have new insight into the New Wave Classic from several interviews that we've done with Berlin lead singer Terry Nunn. Uh, we've combined them to tell a story that you're going to love. Terry Nunn is the Princess Leia of the 80s, New Wave. Uh, her divine beauty, towering voice, and fiery light performances have inspired contemporaries like Lady Gaga and Florence Welch. Even Madonna was an ardent admirer who was a member of the Berlin fan club before she became an icon. Now, I say Princess Leia of New Wave, the Princess Leia of New Wave, because Terry Nunn was highly considered for that role in Star Wars, as she'll tell us following. Uh, she included the story behind auditioning with Harrison Ford. She'll also tell us the story behind Berlin's classic song, The Metro, including how she changed the melody to improve the classic song written by, of course, John Crawford. Here's Terry with the story. Now, as we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Uh, I'm wearing my red pair here. It's got Professor Rock on the side with a little music note. Again, you can put things on the side. I designed them specifically uh, for this, and you can do the same. Just go to zenny.com. You can do a virtual try-on, see how you look. You can add so many great features. You're going to love it. Here's the story of Metro with Terry now. Before you broke out with music in Hollywood, you were an actress. You have parts on shows like T.J. Hooker, William Shatner, James at 15. And then, of course, you auditioned for a, a little movie, did okay in America, called Star Wars. I'm through. Now look, when R2 has been safely delivered to my forces... Did your agent just say... Got this science fiction movie. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. the coolest ever. And it was literally, I mean, it wasn't made yet. So we didn't know what we were talking about. We were in deck chairs in a yeah. warehouse. And George Lucas was a kid, you know, like we were, you know, I was, I don't know, 16, 17. Wow. And Harrison Ford was 21, maybe. I don't know. But he was working as a carpenter on, on George Lucas's kitchen. And he said, but I'm an actor too. And George said, okay, well, why don't you come down and read with these actors that I, I'm, I'm trying out for my new movie. And so Harrison sat and, and read with everybody. ...to a battle station with enough firepower to destroy an entire system. Yeah. And then he got the job. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, did you know when you were with him that this guy would become one of the biggest box office stars ever? No. I knew he didn't like me. Tell me about there that. There was just something. He was just like not into me at all. And I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, it That's didn't crazy. happen. Yeah, but he... I'm glad because in those days, you couldn't be an actor and a musician. It didn't yeah. cross over, really. Elvis Presley was a, an exception, but most people were one or the other. And I, I enjoyed acting, but I'm a night person and music was my... You know, oh, yeah, big your dream, life and and so yeah, I was really hoping to make a living doing that, and so yeah, and you did, and you're one of the only people who has worked with Han Solo and Captain Kirk. He didn't like me either. <laughs> he doesn't like anybody. I, here. Well, no, I, okay, I, this is this is okay. I'll tell the story. It, 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 oh, it was awful. It was awful. He, he was uh, William Shatner was sitting in the makeup chair, and I came up behind him. And I looked down at his hair <laughs> and it was like, I said, can I touch that? And he went, okay. And, and so I did. I said, wow, it feels like 
AstroTurf. <laughs> and he got, it was a rug. I didn't know that. Oh. I didn't know that. Oh, God, it was bad. <laughs> so, yeah, he didn't like me anymore. Oh, man. Riding on the metro. Tell me about Metro and you guys recording that and kind of the story behind that. John wrote it about a girlfriend who was going over to Europe at the time, and he was terrified she was going to meet some hot Italian guy and leave him. So that was the inspiration behind it. That was his, you know, nightmarish fantasy about her and how awful it was going to be and she's going to break up with him. And yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that lyric. I worked on the melodies with him mm -hmm. and, and we put the song together musically. That was my help. But he, it was really his brainchild. And it was Metro that, I mean, we were just kind of fishing around like, what is Berlin? You know, we knew what we liked, you know, uh, Ultravox and Kraftwerk, and we wanted that kind of thing. But like with my voice, which is more emotional and... But we hadn't really gelled into what the sound was going to be. And so we we're just doing songs. And when Metro was done, that was like the, okay, that's it. That's going to be what we judge all our songs by, that song. You know, they're like little kids' songs. You know, they, they, you don't know how they're going to turn out, but some of them just are, wow. And some of them oh, are just yeah. like, nah, you know, they die early. And so they're all different and there's no way to tell. But, but Metro solidified Berlin to us so that we had something that we could hold on to and say, this is our sound. That sparse, dark, unhappy, you know, sensual, but mechanical, metallic sound with my, you know, miserable vocals and emotions and, you know, what yeah. we were feeling at the time was we were 20. We were either horny or miserable. That was <laughs> how we wrote the lyrics. So that's, that was, that really helped us as a song become a band. For me, it was probably one of the 20 new wave opuses that really inspired that movement. Even oh, mid-year when I was interviewing you. him, he was telling me that he was a huge fan of that song when wow, it came out. Thank you. You know, speaking of Ultravox, you know. Oh. But um, Oh my God, yeah. I can't tell you how, I, I, John will just, he will just lose it when I tell him that. <laughs> Thank you, because I mean, yeah. Ultravox is one of the reasons he put Berlin together. You know, he turned me on to Ultravox. Vienna, wow. what a great oh song. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. I'll tell him. I Thank you for he, that. I figured you knew that. No. Oh, okay. Well, we were just chit-chatting as I was Did doing the interview. Did you interview him for yeah. the show? Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, we were talking about Vienna and the New Wave song. He yeah. had the book, because I, I think the okay. writer had given him the book or whatever. Okay. And uh, we were just talking through some Going of the songs the, in it, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, it is. It's one of those songs that kind of helped put New Wave on the map and influence that. But yeah. also the video, the thing about the video is, is that when you take the gun out of the guy's bag and then you're, you're, you turn to the window, I'm like, man, she could make a good Bond girl. I remember someone just sleeping next to me. All things. When I, when yeah, I was, I was like, trying to do the fair faucet hair, like yeah. make it big. Do you remember? It was like all teased uh -huh. up. But that never worked alive. I mean, by, you know, I don't yeah. have really any, any body in my hair at all. So by the second song, it was just flat and awful. And, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. So I had to go for color, but, but I remember that. I just remember yeah. that look. Cause in the yeah. video I could, you know, touch it up and make, put lots of spray right. in it and make it real fair. -a. I remember hating you for loving me. You've heard System of a Down's cover of yeah. it, and... On the metro. Alkaline Trio did cover it as I well. Riding on the metro. And John Frusciante of Red Hot Chili Peppers did a little cover of it as well. Never heard that. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to catch up Have you heard that. every single piece of music ever made? Because you seem to know every <laughs> single piece of music. I remember the letter in my hand. I always felt that that song kind of sounded like 
Do you remember Phantasm? The movie Phantasm, the horror movie? No. It was a big movie in the early 80s. And the synth was kind of similar. It had a kind of an same, that kind of same oh. eerie tone to it. And I wonder if John ever, if, if that was an influence. I mean, everybody's influenced by everything, but I wonder, I always wondered if that was a, yeah. an influence at all or if he'd ever seen it. Because it came out in 1979. But anyway, I wanted to ask you, I've never asked you this before, but after the lyric when you say, and you were waiting there swimming through apologies, you sing sorry there. And you were waiting. It's not on the lyric sheet. So I was wondering, was that something that came naturally to you when you were recording it? Whose idea was it to put sorry? That was my idea. Yeah. I'm good at harmonies. I come up with some interesting stuff. And I was just trying to think of, I don't think there's, there's one. There's one harmony in the, um, riding on the metro, riding on the metro. So there's there's that one, but it really didn't. There's one in the, the verse. So yeah, I just would I come up with little answer lines or harmonies or you know complementary lines underneath things, and that one was one I came up with. What did you think when you first heard it? Because you had to know when you heard the music that it was something really special, something different. When I first heard it, it wasn't yet. I changed the melodies a lot. Um, and I didn't know at the time that that is, is writing, but, and it was okay. I just, you know, at the, the first time I heard it, he had the melody as, I'm alone sitting with my empty glass, my four walls follow me through my past. I was on a Paris train. I emerged in London rain. You were waiting there, swimming through apology, swimming through apologies. So it was just real um, monotone, mechanistic, and I thought, okay, there's something there, but it needed a little more variety in it. It was a little um, too much the same, so I just kind of threw in uh, a glass or walls, follow me through my past. I was on a Paris train. I am murdered in London rain, and you were waiting there, swimming through apologies. You know, I just thought, just to give it a little more of a. Paris train. I am murdered in London rain. Well, when you talk about finding your identity, we've talked about this before, but you were influenced and, and listened to, you know, Stevie Nicks and, and uh, Grace Slick and. And those were, and Ann Wilson, and those were, were people that you really, um, you love their vocal style. But that doesn't sound anything like Berlin, but you, but you were finding your identity. And t talk about that a little bit, because I find that interesting, because a lot of people have influences, and sometimes you're surprised by those influences. But then if you really listen, you can hear a little bit of that, but it's not obvious. Well, you might hear, speaking of Metro, I... I patterned my vocal on that after Debbie Harry because I, I wanted it to be snotty and I wanted it to be, to be tough, even though it's not, I'm, it's a song about a guy leaving me, you know, he's going, he's going off and he's having an affair and he's, he's finding, you know, someone better. And I'm sitting here with my broken glass, you know, drowning my sorrows that's what the song's about and so it's it's really sad but i wanted to be like tough about it and and and, and you are waiting there swimming through your apologies you know and like and and debbie harry was the only singer at the time that demonstrated that a lot and i really liked it that punk attitude and so i I patterned that vocal and that intention after her the, her delivery of uh, of her songs, and it really worked for that song. Well, and the video was so great because at that moment MTV was giving people a new look at pop music. 
because before that, you might yeah. see it on the midnight special, midnight special, or whatever shows were on American Bandstand. But video gave you guys um, and a lot of these bands a new artistic way to um, show themselves to their fans. And that video was played on MTV quite a bit. And there's some, I know that that was exhausting for you because you, the director was really um, kind of pushing you to, because there's a crying scene. You had to do it over and over that subway scene, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that. Well, we were, it was the usual, you know, work, 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 work. You know, the, I don't know why they booked to the back-to-back -back videos and then getting on a plane to start a tour the next day. So by the time we got to the Metro, we had to finish that thing that night because we were on a plane the next day and there, we weren't going to finish it. We didn't, we didn't, it, it would just not be done. And so that was like the last shot at like <laughs> three in the morning where I'm walking around and I'm just done. I'm just in like, I can't do this anymore. I hate you. I hate everybody. I hate myself. And I was literally crying. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. And it was like exactly <laughs> what he wanted, right? He wanted me to fall apart, just break, lose my right on camera. And so he's shooting everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to be going for another five hours, Terry. No, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And he's just shooting Oh man! So that's that's what why that's why I was just so emotional at that point. We got it done, but ah, uh, yeah, there's a lot of that. In that moment, when new wave starts to be is becoming more prevalent, and you guys are going on tour, and all these things are happening, what do you remember most stands out to you about the scene? from from that time because you had the landscape completely changing it was like the tsunami that was kind of wiping away everything and and this music yeah. was coming out that meant something to us as nerds and outcasts and it it you you find we were finally hearing music that spoke to us it was real right because when you listen to pop music like top 40 music is really great stuff that came out in the 80s but it didn't I didn't relate to it necessarily. It didn't speak to me. And, and I remember trying to find my musical identity as a, as a kid, like what spoke to me. And like you had your stuff like Billy Joel and Neil Diamond and Dolly Parton and stuff that you grew up with that your parents were listening to. That was kind of their music. And then like you'd jump on things like hair metal bands and stuff like that. But that didn't feel as natural. Then all of a sudden... My friends and I, we, we find like Berlin and Depeche Mode and Tears for Fears. And, and that leads us down this rabbit hole of the cure and Joy Division and all that kind of stuff. And all that was happening. And so what were your memories of that moment in time? Like anything was possible. It was so different, even to me. I loved it. I loved, I loved how different it was. I loved that it had nothing to do with anything before it, really. There were punk elements to it, and of course rock elements, but it was turning into its own thing, and the electronics of it was completely, you know, the whole melding was anything could happen, and the way, you know, what people were talking about in the songs, you know, you're, you're just uh, mentioning that. And, and when I think of Romeo Void, I might like you better if we slept together. I mean, this was honest woman talk, you know, it was, nobody said that. And, and, but she was, and I loved it. I just loved that the, anything was possible and anybody could get heard. It just was wide open to, a whole new genre of music and and i wanted it so bad because for me after glam rock to me it i it really started with bowie and then you know t-rex the new york dolls but it 
didn't really coalesce into anything. It didn't get big. And then it was just arena rock in the 70s and just corporate disco in the 70s. It's just like, where's my music? You know, I, I want what my brother had in the 60s. He had lots of cool stuff. And it was all different. It was all fresh and weird and great. And this isn't fresh and weird and great. This is just... This is just coming from companies and it's all packaged nice. And I don't like you, I don't relate to this. Yeah. And so when this happened, it was like, finally, you know, it's happening. Something that's ours that we created, that we can relate to, that's saying what we want to say. Totally get it. You know, my daughter's 15. And I don't get a lot of the stuff she listens to, but it doesn't matter because it speaks to her. And that's what we need, especially when we're teenagers and everything's starting to form and we're starting to decide who we are and what we believe in and what we don't. And and we need those, those avenues of music that speak for us and speak to us. And that's what it felt like for me with New Wave and punk, it was speaking to me and for me. Riding on the metro. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about this new wave classic. What are your memories of this song? And also, what are your thoughts on Terry going up for the part of Princess Leia? That would have been interesting. Let us know below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe below and to don't forget to check out our new merch, our new show on Patreon, Help us keep the music alive. That's really the idea here. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.